in the area of music, the internet really brings out the best in all of us because there's so much great inspiration on the internet when it comes to music making, when it comes to music making technology. And for example, creating the Synlimb would have never been possible without the internet. The future of music. How is music and innovation going to work together? I am, I'd say, a hobby enthusiast when it comes to electronic music. I have a bit of a history in DJing and at some point thought, you know, when it comes to techno and, and house, it's not that complicated. Maybe I can do my own tracks instead of playing somebody else's. So I've started producing my own music from my bedroom a couple of years ago and quickly fell into the so-called modular rabbit hole that is... I started making music on analog modular synthesizers, which is basically technology from the 1970s on a conceptual level, yeah, where you build your own instrument from little hardware pieces that you buy from different vendors from the internet and you put them together um, and you run cables between them. And then in the end, if all goes well, you end up with a machine that you can play so that it sounds like techno or house or whatever. Now, my challenge is that I was born uh, with a physical disability. I'm missing my left lower arm since birth. And, you know, I'm, I'm wearing a fairly decent prosthesis that I can control through muscle signals in my arm. So there's a, there are electrodes in here and they pick up the muscle signals that control the hand. You can open it, you can close it, you can rotate the wrist. You can even rotate it a full 360 degrees. It's not very useful, but, you know, it shows that bionic hands can do things that regular hands cannot. The thing is, when you play a modular synthesizer, and there is a tiny part or a tiny bit from my synthesizer here on the table, it's not connected, so we can't hear anything, it's dry. Um, there is a lot of tiny knobs on these things that you need to turn. It's very de delicate, um, it's very detailed. And it's really difficult to, to work these knobs with a prosthesis like this. So basically, I was kind of left to play one-handed. But the thing with, with these synthesizers is that all of these knobs on these synthesizers have little input jacks, like ports. They look like headphone jacks next to them, where you can remote control almost every button on the thing by sending an analog voltage into it. So instead of turning this knob, what I could potentially do is send a voltage into this connector, which is next to the knob, which remote controls the knob. And I always thought it's kind of stupid that my prosthesis works, works like this, that I'm picking up electric signals from my arm here, convert them into a mechanical movement here, that I then use to turn a button that basically results in something electrical, whereas I could send the electrical impulse directly to the system. So uh, the idea was to convert or hack my prosthesis in such a way that the muscle signals, instead of moving the hand, go directly into the synthesizer. And even though I'm not an engineer, long story short, with the help of uh, my friend uh, Krizi, who I met on the internet, and with the help of my husband Daniel, who is an engineer, uh, we created a, um, a converter uh, for my prosthesis. So we call it the Synlimb. And the way this works is that you can, and this looks a bit weird, so uh, viewer discretion advised, because I'm about to take my hand off. You can actually take this off, like this. And then now, we can put this on. 
like that, switch it on. Right, and now of course I can't, you know, there is no visible movement except for the wrist rotation, but now there's these two ports up here that output a voltage that is analogous to the, to the muscle signals that the synthesizer understands. So what I can now do is take a cable from the synthesizer and plug it into my prosthesis like this. And depending on where I plug these cables, I can now effortlessly change any musical parameter of the synthesizer. So depending on where I plug this, this can be the pitch of a melody that's playing, this can be the filter frequency of a filter that's fil filtering a melody, it can be the fill of a rhythm, whatever. Any parameter of the music can now be controlled with these cables. And the thing is, for me, it feels completely effortless because I've spent the last 20 years learning to produce these muscle signals in order to move my hand processes. So for me, it's become a second nature to produce these muscle signals. I don't really have to think about making an effort. I just think hand opens, but now that immediately changes a musical parameter. And it still feels weird, <laughs> but it's something that I really, really deeply enjoy. So um, if you give a signal to your prosthesis, um, is that um, turn the knob and push the button, or is it higher, faster beat, uh, change, change uh, the color of the music? Hmm. To be honest, it's, it's a little bit difficult for me to describe because, look, it's if I ask you, what do you think when you open and close your hand? It's difficult to answer the question because what you actually think is, well, I'm opening my hand, I'm closing my hand. And that's how the bionic hand prosthesis, at least for me, works. Because for me, the process of controlling it has become so automatic that I don't really have to think about it. I just, I, what, what I do is I think hand open and it opens and I think hand close and it closes. And that's kind of still the same thing that I think when I work with this. So it's not that I think pitch up or pitch down or filter open or filter close. It's more like, it's more like a thinking of on and off or strong or weak, really. Uh, it's what I'm thinking. And depending on where these cables go, and there's literally hundreds of places in the synthesizer where these things can go, different things will happen. So it's a little bit more abstract. So you ha only have two cables. I, yes. I'm sure we will see in a bit um, how this is uh, turning out. But do you have to change the plug where you're putting the cable? Uh, it depends. Um, I can change the plug. Well, I can change the plugs. What I can also do is put the plugs in a module that can send the information that's coming from these cables to many other places. And I can then actually use one of these cables to control where the, th where the signal of the other goes, uh, which is adding a layer of complexity, really, but also a layer of possibilities. There is kind of a forthcoming from starting um, the button on and off to making music. So um, how did that develop? Does it have to do with uh, the development of the prosthesis as well or um, with the development of the synthesizer or both? Mm. I think the possibility for making this even more complex and that would allow for more artistic expression lies in the further development of the prosthesis. Because at the moment, the way these prosthesis work is there's just two electrodes that sit on the surface of the skin and that they pick up signals. And this is merely a proof of concept that you can use these signals for working on a musical instrument. And, it's, and the advantage is, of course, that the signal goes directly from the, the brain through the nerve into the muscle and then directly into the instrument without the detour over the mechanical movement. So in itself, I think, 
this is an interesting concept that shows that a more immediate control over musical instruments is possible. But then again, I'm not the first one to experiment with that. Experiments where musical instruments are connected to the body with sensors date back to the 1970s, where people tried early EEG systems to link a percussion to their head. And there's already today synthesizer modules that come with electrodes that you can stick to the surface of the skin and pick up the signal there and use this as a modulation source in the instrument. However, if we had better interfaces between the human I'd say muscle system or even our nervous system, so I'm talking a brain-computer interface here, that would allow potentially a very direct connection between our cognitive system and any kind of technology, including of course musical instruments. So the big challenge in making a great hand prosthesis is the interface. How do we get the signals or the intentions from our brain to the prosthesis. And there's a lot of research going on in this area at the moment. Some more basic research that evolves around implanting electrodes into the body so that we can bet get better and higher resolution signals, up to trying to access brain signals, EEG signals, directly without taking the detour through a muscle. All of this research still has a very, very long way to go, so I doubt that we'll see major breakthroughs in this area in the next five to ten years. It's probably a larger time span. But ultimately, it will be possible to control technology more directly through thought. And that will ultimately include musical instruments. So I think, at least potentially, we can envision a future where I can create or even play a note just by thinking about it. So this uh, is all in theory of what you can do with um, electronics. Let's see how it's working practically. Sure, follow me. Welcome to Berthold Meyer's DJ Paradise, um, I imagine. So what do we see here? Actually, everything that you see here has nothing to do with DJing. These are all musical instruments, um, and almost no samples at all. So basically, this is one complete modular synthesizer that we use more for experimental kind of sound sculptures. So the sound that it makes is kind of dark and gloomy and it's really big pads and drones and it's it's a great system for experimenting and trying different senses to shape more abstract sounds in a way um, and then what you see here in the middle is what i would be taking to maybe a club uh, or a place where it's really about making danceable music so this is a simple uh, modular synthesizer with six voices and a sample-based drum computer and we have a sequencer down here that basically controls all of these voices and then we have a mixer here where it all comes together. Um, so, um, are there different parts that you use with your right hand and other parts that you use uh, with the prosthesis? Yeah, of course. So I. I will do most of the overall general controls with the right hand. I will use the prosthesis for pushing a few buttons down here in the sequencer. And of course, I use the um, voltage that the prosthesis gives for certain parameters. Specifically, uh, I will use uh, the first cable, which goes here in this particular instance for um, manipulating the rhythm that we'll be hearing, specifically the fill of certain of the percussion instruments, and I'll use the other line for manipulating uh, the filter cutoff or, or the filter frequency of a filter that we'll be hearing. Maybe to give you a short kind of dry uh, example what that uh, means in practice. So for example, what you can hear now is a very simple, it's a clap, 
uh, the clap is actually on the on the two and and two and four, so very typical for house or techno. And what I can now do is, uh, if this would work, uh, which it currently, which it now does, right? I can I can kind of think to increase the the frequency of the of the claps, right? So whenever there's more claps than just on the two and the four, it's it's my doing. So that's one thing. Uh, that we'll be doing and then the other thing so very simple is uh, when there's a melody um, so there's one melody that sounds like this that goes through this filter and a filter as you might know well if you if you open if you open the filter it really drastically changes the the, the feel of the sound and so this red button I can remote control with this wire so which can which gives it a really I really like it because it's really instant, it's really organic. Uh, it's not synced to the beat, so it gives it a little bit more, bit more organic feel, which is quite subtle, but I think really distinguishes this filter movement from filter movement that you would, for example, get from a low frequency oscillator. So, so far for the dry run, and like when we hear it all in, uh, all, if we want to hear it all together, uh, I'll quickly have to make I'll have to have a quick look at where we are. Okay, so let's start with a kick. Very simple. Let's maybe bring in... After all, we're making dance music. this what is still difficult would you say or what is it you could yeah. add on with a I don't know more extended mm. prosthesis so apparently the degrees of freedom that I can control the prosthesis are with this setup quite limited it's really like two parameters depending on where you plug the cables so of course if you had a prosthesis that would capture the signals from the body uh, with higher levels of, of resolution and, and more and different signals, it would instantly give you more degrees of freedom of what you can do. And then there's something else. You really have to learn to play in a different way than using your hand. Because with a prosthesis like this, when you learn to control the hand by opening and closing it, what you need to learn is to give quick and strong and powerful signals, almost like a binary zero or one. Whereas with this, it's much more important to create little subtleties, which is something that I've explicitly learned not to. So I now have to relearn. So for example, if you listen to this filter, so to, the, to the sound that we're hearing in the background through the filter, so now the filter is completely open because I give a strong signal from the prosthesis and now the filter is almost completely closed. Um, and you know, something in the middle is more interesting because it's more subtle and creates more movement, but it's something that I have to really concentrate on. But I'm getting better and better the more I play, I realize, so yeah. Talking about Herbert von Karajan, we all have in mind this famous picture where, where his head is covered with electrodes 
and where he wants to uh, sort of see on screen how his brain is working. Um, you have an idea connected to this. So you you brought electrodes here and I'll be the guinea pig. You'll be the guinea pig. Well, I mean, Herbert von Karajan, with this idea of using electrodes for musical purposes, he was really so far ahead of his time. Because now we're slowly moving into a time where this idea becomes commercial uh, product. So, for example, here in this uh, synthesizer that we, we use more kind of for the for the artistic soundscapey things, there's actually a module that allows you to connect to your body uh, with electrodes to make music with your body. So, uh, what you do is you take you need three of these electrodes and stick them on the surface of your skin two on the muscle that you try to capture and one other somewhere else that's like the ground or the reference. Um, so, please, Julia, if you would come to me and what we'll do is we'll hook you up. So we have already attached the three electrodes to your arms and maybe it's best if you do it so that I don't hurt you. So the black one goes there, exactly, good. And then the red one goes to the, to the wrist, so the red one goes here. Super, and then the blue one, of course. And now it's it's not very reliable, but if you close your fist like really strong and then make this kind of movement, there you go. Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, it's, it's difficult. So strong, yeah, there you go. So, but sometimes, now if I touch you, because I have a different electrical potential than you do. So when I'm touching your skin here, so basically I can now play your body as an instrument. Huh? Right. So just as, as a conceptual idea, so you can do all sorts of things because Basically now we're creating a socio-technical system where the computer, well not the computer really, it's all analog technology, but where the machine and the human kind of become one. And now we can add more machinery, but we also can add more humans to create, you know, systems that create music. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right. I... <laughs> There you go. Brilliant. Thank you. So cool. So uh, we just did this fantastic experiment. I felt a little bit like Herbert von Karajan in this. Um, so what uh, is the future capable of uh, machine-wise and music-wise and connection-wise of the both? I think the future is full of more exciting ways for creative expression between the human body and the musical uh, instrument. Um, and I'm not talking about some weird transhumanist vision of the future where we all plug ourselves into a computer and think of music and then it plays. No. We'll find new ways of collaborating with each other um, you know, making music together, but maybe over distance, such that I can send signals from my body over the internet to somewhere else. So maybe in the distant future, a world-renowned pianist can play a concert without having to travel, because he or she plays the concert at home with sensors attached to their hands, and then through ultra-fast internet, these signals are then transferred maybe to a robot who at a remote location plays, but just like the pianist, because the pianist is basically remote controlling the robot in real time. So we could have concerts without really needing to travel. So we'd save a lot of carbon dioxide, we'll reduce our footprint, and even in Corona, it allows social distancing. And that's just one example of, I think, the exciting musical future that lies ahead of us. And if I can add, there's a lot of people that criticize the internet strongly for what social media have done to the cohesion in our society, the polarization and so forth. But I think 
in the area of music, the internet really brings out the best in all of us because there's so much great inspiration on the internet when it comes to music making, when it comes to music making technology. And for example, creating the Synlimb would have never been possible without the internet because I found Krizi, who has now become a close friend of mine, through the internet and he was exciting to collaborate and, and we would share designs and ideas over the internet and it would have never been possible without the internet. And then to have a design for a circuit board and to send it to China over the internet, only to receive it back a couple of days later so that you can put the little uh, electronic components onto it. Amazing. So I think really in terms of when it comes to making music, the internet really brings out the best of us. And that will inspire even more creativity in the future. Can I teach my prosthesis to make music? That is a very difficult question. I'd say, in principle, yes. We have come very far, only in the past decade or so, in machine learning and pattern recognition. And this technology finds its way into prosthetic technology. The way this works is that up until very recently, to control an electronic prosthesis like this, what you had to do is you had to learn how to produce certain muscle signals with your body that the prosthesis could understand. So you would have to adapt your body to the technical requirements of the prosthesis, right? Training with a prosthesis like this involves learning to send muscle signals that the prosthesis will understand. The new technology works the other way around. There's a lot of sensors, electrodes on the residual limb. And what you do is you basically close your eyes and imagine moving the missing limb that's not there. And while doing so, you tell the prosthesis, well, what I'm thinking at the moment is I'm thinking about closing and opening the hand. And at the same time, the prosthesis will read the muscle pattern activity on the surface of the residual limb and will try to learn that from you. So it's basically now the other way around that the prosthesis tries to learn what you mean with very low level artificial intelligence, i.e. machine learning algorithms. And these algorithms, of course, can be used for any kind of purpose. So, for example, a pianist could record the muscle signals from his arms while playing a beautiful piece. And these signals could then be learned or transformed or transferred into a machine learning algorithm. And maybe I could buy that as a software plugin for my prosthesis to download over the internet. And then suddenly my hand prosthesis would be able to recreate the movements that some algorithm has learned from this pianist. And in this way, it would actually be possible to copy the movements of somebody else into a limb that I'm wearing. <laughs>